now watching West Harper Community yeah. Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. You're watching West Harper Community Television. For the community, by the community. I am your host, Joanne Bauer, and I have three guests. I'm thrilled to speak with three artists this evening. And to my left, I'm going to introduce all three first. We have Joe McGinnis, who's from the West Hartford, from the West Hartford Art League, and also lives in West Hartford. Linda Rahm, who lives in Farmington. And David Borowski, who's our Hartford artist, representing Hartford this evening. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Before we talk about all the pieces that you've brought in and the shows that we want to highlight, of course, that are happening in May, I do want to just quickly announce another event. Bright Star Vision Ghana is a group that I'm familiar with, and some of you in West Hartford would know Marla Ludwig. She heads up this um, organization, and they're also part of Sister Cities of Hartford. And they're going to have a festival May 8th downtown at the Hartford um, City Hall Forum, and so anyone can come on over, have some food. There'll be lots of, um, <laughs> I was going to say lots of drinking. No, there'll be lots of <laughs> dancing, and it's, oh. it will be very festive costumes, and that starts approximately uh, 5.30. So wanted to just get that out of the way, and also to say that I'm currently president of Bright Star Vision Ghana. We, we um, send educational supplies, and we pay for services in Ghana. So I can put that aside, and now we're going to talk about, well, first of all, I ran into both of you at the West Hartford Art League. That's right. right. The, and this is in relation to the, what will be the current exhibit, CT plus six. Right. Right. That's right. And both of you ha have obviously been part of that exhibit in the past because I know you're both elected artists. member artists of the, of the West Hartford Art League. Joe, would you like to tell us a little bit, or, or Linda, about how one becomes an elected member and how does that relate to the, the show, CT Plus Six? Sure. Well, I think, I think in order to become an elected member, you have to be um, juried into the CT Plus Six show three times. Um, for me, I didn't get in three times in a row. It took me quite a while, but I was delighted to finally get in and be accepted. Mm -hmm. um, do you want to tell me more? Yeah. And I think it has to be three different jurors that right. you get juried in. Mm -hmm. um, it used to be CT plus five. Um, and then we decided to get a little bit bigger, and we included New York State, and now it's CT plus six. The, right. the, five, the other group is the New England states, and right. then Connecticut, mm -hmm. or um, right. New York. So it's an exhibit that's going to be at the West Hart Hartford Art League, and we should give the address. That's 37 Buena Vista road in West Hartford and the, um, the show will run from May 4th to June 22nd this year and as we were saying it's an annual event it's been going on for quite a while as a as a local show but then became regional right. uh -huh. and became heart uh, New England regional and now as you said it's the New England states Connecticut and and New York all of New York State right, right. so right. entries can entries come digitally and certainly this time it looked to be over 300 en yeah. entries, of which approximately 70 or 80 are, sele are selected. So I want to say it's quite an honor. Each of you had Thank pieces you. selected for the exhibit, and that's why you're here, basically, right. because we're talking a little bit about the, um, this exhibit in particular. But you, you both have a history with the West Hartford Art League also. I know right, that right. You, you do, what, volunteer work? Mm -hmm. 
Yep, I'm on the gallery committee, and I hang a lot of the shows um, and basically do any kind of volunteer work that needs to be done at the oh, Art League. Right. I love the community. The people are great, and they're just fun to hang out with. Right. So, Linda, as a member of the gallery committee, what does that mean? And what I'm most curious about is do you get to be there when the juror comes through? Ah, that's a great question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we all want to be there when the juror comes through. And we used to um, participate in that day in that when things were unaccepted, we would take them out of the gallery and put them in the back room. But um, now it's kind of a closed thing. Everybody wanted to hear what the juror was saying about right. the different pieces because it's very educational. Right. It is. And um, we felt that it was sort of a conflict of interest because most of the people on the gallery committee had submitted pieces and um, we didn't want to put the juror under any kind of pressure at all. So, so you don't do it that way. We don't way do it never. anymore. No. I went to one, one time I went to hear, this was at the uh, West Hartford Art League in fact, to hear the, um, the juror talk about the pieces and, and I did not enter a piece to that show so I wasn't particularly invested in it. But what was interesting to me was that that person actually um, eliminated first pieces that he did not like. And so I thought, that's so interesting because they, you know, usually will we'll say, oh, it's not about being rejected from a show. It's about being accepted into a show. And I right. thought, no, it isn't. He's really rejecting first. So, yeah. so it, was, it was interesting to me. But the nice thing is hearing about the the rationale for why pieces are being uh, uh -huh. selected or not right and i think that each juror has a slightly different take on it and different angles and certainly we've talked about the subjectivity of art right uh -huh. and the subjectivity of jurors also uh -huh. right. that's yeah. part of it now this particular show i was noticing that the best the best in show prize is a thousand dollars which is for around here that's pretty <coughs> substantial. Right. It's a great a prize. Yeah. It's a wonderful prize. And, and I think there are a thousand dollars more for other prizes. Other prizes. So it's, right. you know. That's wonderful. Yeah. So you can win second in show. Well, and third. Third in show. Mm -hmm. but, and also best in show gets to have a one person exhibit That's at right. the That's correct. league, which is really cool. Yep. Yeah. And speaking of that, well I was going to say Linda, then you you um, were an award winner last year, right? I was. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I was thrilled. And, and then what we're going to talk about a bit this evening is how... Uh, how we have, I am, I am thrilled to have artists here who represent a range of, of art. So we have mm -hmm. some that's a little bit more representational, meaning that it looks a little bit like real life. Some that's more abstract, and then David is going to talk to us about his conceptual art, which he couldn't even bring here because it's so conceptual. <laughs> and we also, and we're also gifted to have sculptures in front of us, so there's lots to talk about. And I'm going to talk. Start with you, Joe. Yeah. And um, now you work in pastels, right? And would you like to talk about this piece or the uh, piece behind here? What would you like to tell well, us about soft pastels? Either one. Maybe I'll start with um, the piece over there. Okay. Um, that's called Surrounded, and I, I started with, um, I, I am a studio artist. I go out, I view, I'm constantly stopping and taking photographs of things that intrigue me. I get back and I do some cropping and manipulating of the image. Um, either, either digitally or just as a photograph, and that's where my source. So I happened to be um, at the ocean, and I was intrigued by the colors of the stones. Um, I've always found that nature is my major source. You really bring nature into, let's say, into a gallery where right, where right. guests can see it. Right. You know, and I'm unlikely. Focus. I'm un. I'm, you're not going to find me doing a portrait. I'm just not. Mm -hmm. But I, that's my, my real soul is in Nature. what you see outside, mm -hmm. outdoors. Mm -hmm. And um, so pastels are really a wonderful kind of medium. They're like chalk. It's a little more sophisticated because it's actually the same pigments that are used in oils or other painting mediums. But um, they're pretty much pure, just a little bit of something to bind it together until you apply it to a surface. I work on a sanded paper, 
Oh, really? Kind of like sandpaper. It can have various edges. Some people actually make their own sanded papers. Um, and that allows you to hold the chalk dust or the mm -hmm. pastel dust mm -hmm. in place, the pigments, and you can apply. When I first started, I thought, wow, this is not a forgiving medium. It's an incredibly forgiving medium. You can go back over it. You can layer. Really? You can mm -hmm. make different kinds of marks. You can be very, you know, it can be very, very realistic. I mean, it allows you to go that way. You can be very abstract in your work. That has no bearing. Um, the medium doesn't make any uh, problem for that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, and I found it that was just, I, the more I did it, the more I, I became, I had fell in love with the kind of medium. Plus I could get my fingers in and smoosh mm -hmm. around. Right. Mm -hmm. And I started initially as a three-dimensional artist. <clears throat> I did soft sculpture and which sort of dates me if I go back to that, those good old 70s, <laughs> so but, and, and play and other things. And, um, I've, but I didn't have the space to do that kind of work. And the pastels you know, gave me a, an outlet um, and it's something easy to work with um, uh, in, in my space confinement. So it's been wonderful. Um, and you're really, really a spokesperson you. for soft pastels because you've yeah. explained it to us very nicely. The, these pieces, are these on, on sanded textural paper? Yes, both of them are on sanded textural wow. paper. And um, I would never really, have guessed that. There are some it must be very fine, no? Well, this one is kind of like sandpaper. It really yeah. feels like it when you touch it. There are others that almost feel like flocked paper that people uh -huh. use. Uh -huh. So it's really very interesting. And other people make their own and really enjoy having the surface um, so that you see the, um, the brush stroke in it. Yes. And then that influences how the, their image as they create it. And when you say brush stroke, you mean of the pastels. Not of the no, pastels oh, necessarily. Oh, okay. Of the application when they make okay. their own, they'll apply something like um, a gesso and a pumice type oh, of uh, right. grit to the surface. And the brush stroke of oh, applying that so that can give you that other kind of background surface to work oh. off of. So it, it's it's wow. kind of interesting. It's very interesting. And it, I did not know that. Now the piece behind here that absolutely you've, um, in a sense, blown up. So right. We would see those shells if we went. We have seen those shells if we go to the beach. But Walk now along. you're bringing them to us, and it's so. The, it's so beautiful. I, I love the values of the color and the shading. And Thank you. Just, Thank you. Um, just a one, it's, it seems a, like it would be a wonderful process. It's a lot of fun. I really, um, I'm a, a very slow worker. <laughs> it takes me well, quite a while to do it. detail. But I love the detail. I love being able to go and look at something. I love, I love the bubbles. That was great fun. Absolutely. And the reflection. It was really... You know, another little world opening in there. Oh, so okay. I, my thought is that maybe people will stop a moment and think about it. And the next time they go to the beach, kind of wander along there. Don't just rush into it or go, you know, but mm -hmm. they'll just kind of look around. And I love see the way what they've got. I love the way you've incorporated the bubbles into, it was fun. The, into the scene. The ocean. Do you work in plein air or not? I I have tried, uh -huh. and that's very funny. I once took a workshop with a wonderful um, pastel artist who was plein air, and my process is so reverse. It's a very many people who do plein air do large vistas yes. on a smaller piece, and they have a time limit, or they'll take their notes and then go back to the studio. But a true plein air person works outside. I like to do small things on a big surface, so I found it was actually really quite humorous because I found during the process that it's totally different from my working process and people were done with these beautiful beautiful pieces many of them much more gestural than the kinds of things I do in four hours and I'm still just getting blocked in and ready so I was, it was, they're going and they're walking with it to yeah. lovely things so um, I don't do plain air. Right. But I, but I go out, you I get go out in the air. I get yes, a shot. Yes, and I yes. go out and, I, and that's just wander around taking my pictures mm -hmm. and sitting and looking and so on. So. Yeah. 
and then it's really about the, yeah. the photography that you take and can bring back to your studio <coughs> and then and recreate it, but recreate it in a, in a different way. Medium, that, yeah. Yeah, different medium and in a different size maybe that enhances nature in, in a certain and way. And hopefully directs your attention directs more your to attention. the things I specifically want you yes. to look at. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, wonderful. it's great. And so... Linda, I want to talk about, now, now you have, you do work in plein air, right? Well, yeah. I wanted to address that. Um, working in plein air is incredibly difficult. It is. The sun is changing everything as you stand out there, and um, things that you don't want in your painting suddenly kind of seem to move into your painting, <laughs> and uh, it's, um, it's overwhelming. Yes, I've done it, and... I don't think I've ever been successful doing it. Really hard. So, some of my style looks like plain air. Yes, it does. Um, and I am definitely, um, I'm a New Englander, and I'm influenced by the New England uh, landscape. But what I try to do is um, really show my brushwork and show the individual color notes, kind of like music. Um, you know, there it's just a dot of color, um, very much like a musical mm -hmm. uh, note. When I look at a scene, I'll also go out and take photographs and take notes about the different areas. This is uh, Cahoe Farm in Colchester. Mm -hmm. And you probably wouldn't recognize it if you went to the farm, mm -hmm. but it inspired me. So I'll take notes, take photographs, and then come home and um, decide what the most important part of that is. Mm -hmm and really eliminate a lot. Yeah. Um, I was a systems analyst as my real career, and so I analyze the different things, and I, I find art to be similar yeah. to um, my ex-profession. Mm -hmm. And then I work on abstract yes. pieces. Yes, tell us about this is, then this is going <coughs> even more the next step into yes. abstraction. And, and the abstract pieces for me are very difficult in that you don't have any jumping off spot. You know, I actually had a scene to work with, yes. mm -hmm. but this just kind of um, comes out of your head, and it, it's a matter, this is an acrylic piece, and it's a matter of um, adding elements mm -hmm. and trying to make sure that um, they're all unique and, and different from each other and not spaced the same distance apart and basically that the whole thing works as a unit. It's, it's easy to fall in love with one area of a painting, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if it just isn't working in the entire painting, it's got to go. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So would you say that this is more, uh, uh, in a way, about design first? Is exactly. It, that's how it came to you mentally as a design, or exactly. maybe the colors too. And, and some of the designs come to me when... Um, when I'm doing ordinary things like hiking at West Hartford Reservoir and I see um, the amosite that's all fractured and I find myself in my mind just cropping different parts of it and it, they would make fabulous paintings and I've painted some of those. It, it, oh, wow. Nature just kind of, um, kind of makes it for you. All you have to right. do is, is see it. Really it's a lot about yourself. observation, isn't it? Yeah. It's it about really observation, mm -hmm. and then it's certainly, in, in, in all cases, it's about conceptualization. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk to David because he is the, the, let's say, the conceptual artist of our group, but obviously what you were talking about was conception, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us, David, how your art is. Well, m maybe you can describe a bit about what you did at the at Art Walk in, in Hartford most recently. Uh, yeah, you know, the most of the, the, especially in the last two or three years, there's mm -hmm. been a, a connection, and a lot of that is my work pretty much is kind of inspired by politics. I usually, I usually say it's sex, drugs, and rock and roll, <laughs> and politics, and but politics. that's pretty much all the same anyway. Yeah, so that wraps it especially up. Especially lately, yes. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I, I look to, a lot of times, uh, titles will be song lyrics or, uh, or dialogue from a, a movie, and I'd like it to be, it's kind of cryptic at times. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be, I, I think in terms of uh, clues, I leave clues mm -hmm. about things. Yeah, I want the work cool. to be visually stimulating it is uh, that's why i make it but then the more you think about it and and uh, 
pick up the clues, maybe you dig in and you mm -hmm. find more. Mm -hmm. But I also think in terms of kind of leading everybody down a path, and then here's all the clues, and now you're on your own. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you got to so find your way I out after that. I noticed the word provocative coming up in your artist statement quite a bit. You want to provoke. Uh, yeah, because I think uh, provocative work makes you think more, you know what I mean? Um, and, and I mean, ladies had mentioned earlier about how realistic work seems to sell better at certain galleries and it's because you could put that up and it looks nice and then after a while you could just walk by it and it blends into the wall where well, something is is disturbing a little bit or or confrontational or something like that you have to think about it now and some of the the work that I admire the most artists that I admire generally uh, it's and I try this myself it's dealing with context basically a lot of stuff I do is it in a gallery space? If that was, uh, you know, out on the street in front of the gallery, it may not be art. You know what I mean? It's playing with the fact yeah. of what is art, where is it? Is so being in a gallery makes it art. But I like to try to walk that line between art and non-art. Okay. You know. So, so David, what brings you to? It's a sort of a cultural commentary. Sometimes yeah. the pieces yeah. are. Can you talk about a little a little bit about your history that brought you to this type of art? Um, Do you know how you got here? I, I started basically doing sculpture, but then uh, mm -hmm. sculpture, as after a while, I think too, is you you get into something and then it's hard to get out of it. So there was a point where it's like uh, not all my ideas were coming as sculpture. So I said, well, I'm going to make a conscious effort to mix different things in a show or do whatever I want because, uh, you know, I, I don't do much painting. I've done a couple, you know, and usually they're uh, representations of a painting. They're not actually a painting. Uh -huh. So uh, I want it to look like a painting because uh -huh. I want the, the reference to, like, uh, there's different references. I try to reference things because if you know the reference, then you then you see it, or if you recognize a lyric in a song, I've, that's a title. You go, oh, that's from this song, mm -hmm. and well, maybe that song was playing at your prom or at some party, and then it brings that back. So all that nostalgia is there, and now you can't look at that without knowing that. It's like I think of it as like sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and you see a shadow, and you think there's a dog there or something, and then you realize what it is. You can't see it again. Even though you know, okay, that was the shadow, and it would—I right. thought there was somebody there, and now it's just my coat on the chair. Yeah. So once you know, you have information. It's like you can't unknow it. Unknow yeah. it. Uh -huh. Wow, but if you and I are both looking at a piece, I get the song title, you don't. We're now looking at the same piece and not seeing the same thing, and I find that Absolutely. very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, right. and. There are so many layers and overlays, too, to an experience of walking into, as you said, w walking onto right. an installation right. of yours. Uh, for a while now, again, for a couple of years, I've been doing these text pieces on the floor with gaffer's tape, So, and, and you walk on the piece so while well, it's there. So it's not just the letters, it's not just the words, the fact it's now the floor. Well, the floor is part of the gallery, so that piece now makes the whole floor of the piece. It's not just the letter itself yeah. or as I mentioned earlier you, uh, I, some pieces are in two parts mm -hmm. but I'll put them on opposite walls so you can't yeah. see them at the same time but it's not two separate pieces it's the same piece so you have mm -hmm. to you know so now it also can, takes in that space in between and you're standing there and you have to now move and look around because you can't see it from one vantage point what's you know? the largest installation that you've ever done do you know um, there was a, um, a college outside of Pittsburgh several years ago, which, uh, I mean, gallery size wise yeah. was, was probably mm -hmm. the biggest one. But at that piece at, at Art Walk, the, the text piece that said, yes. right place, wrong time, that was 65 feet long. Right. So that was a long piece, you know. Mm -hmm. That was a very impressive mm. piece. All, all of um, the, and as you as you've described, you might have sculpture within your installation. You might have video within mm. your installation. You might have a bicycle. I'm thinking within your installation, and and these elements talk to our memory. Is that is yeah? That correct? And the library referenced. I mean, some of it was vague, mm -hmm. but some of them I too I like. Uh, and uh, an earlier show this year at down in Essex. There were uh, references to uh, what I call kind of iconic so social events or mm -hmm. iconic kind of uh, media events. But the thing is, there's so many of them that they start to fade away. Mm -hmm. I had a, a large uh, digital print of the cloud 
uh, trail from the Challenger when it blew up. Mm -hmm. Only I had uh, it was on a black background, and it was it, the show had was basically a lot of uh, everything was black and red because I think in terms of color, believe it or not, too. Right. So, and uh, I had a few people look at it and they go, "What is that? A flower?" And it's like. Oh, We've wow. seen that image, you know, a yeah. million times, but it's like it, it, it's some people have forgotten it already, you know. Yeah. So and you and the images, the two uh, images yeah. at the library had the picture where um, where Son of Sam gets arrested, you know, and that Son mm -hmm. of Sam thing was to me was a was a big thing, and and it's oh. because it changed people's uh, idea of of safety and security within yeah. a city because he was kind of random. And then the next picture was um, from the Altamont concert was the Rolling Stones performing. Mm -hmm. That was the concert mm -hmm. with the, the Hells Angels where the security and somebody got stabbed. It was a big, you know, horrific kind of failure, that whole concert. Right. And someone asked me and they said, well, when was that anyway? When was that concert? That concert was five months after Woodstock. So Woodstock right. was all peace and love. And five months later, it's all gone. Oh, it's just, wow. you know. And we, and we certainly changed. have everything these changed. iconic <laughs> images, you know, mm -hmm. we're living in this time where it seems every day there's something that calls our attention to the Right, and I think because the of the cultural. quantity, you start to forget other things. You do. You forget yeah. or, or, or have well, to just not as be in, in denial about some of them, right? Yeah. Do you know, this time always goes so fast, and we didn't actually get to talk about the sculptural pieces in mm -hmm. front of us, but I, I want to point them out, and I do, David, want you to say where your show is going to, your next show is going to be, oh, please. Uh, the May show. So uh, uh, May 2nd through the end of August, I will have an installation at the uh, New Britain Museum of American Art in New Britain, and, um, the, which is basically there is a card that I'll be giving yes. out at the opening. Yes. And uh, David brings us gifts. Yes. It's, yeah. And, uh, it's, and uh, it's, yes. Basically, it's the show. Uh, this one is uh, kind of what, what inspired me was like uh, two things: anarchy and this anarchist kind of feel that we're we're like running into, yeah. and also lawlessness, which is part of that. But it's I think in terms of how. You know, the bank robbers go to jail, but the bank owners who are robbing it don't. So yeah. there's this unequal yeah. justice. So that's kind of the, the groundwork for this show. So. Mm -hmm. so that's your inspiration. Not, not necessarily these light, light, uh, yeah. <laughs> not, is, uh, not as light as yeah. flowers, maybe. Mm -hmm. But, but about, we've <laughs> certainly seen uh, quite a bit of the range of, of uh, yeah. visual yeah. and conceptual art this evening. And I thank you so much for coming in. And I thank my thank camera, you. Thank you. Thank you. camera people and thank the studio and the, our station manager. And uh, we'll, uh, we will look forward to the shows, to seeing the shows. Thank you. Thank you.